Jesse, let's start a podcast. Jeremiah. Jesse. Jeremiah. Jesse. Let's do a Christmas podcast. Ooh. Uh, are, are you ready for Christmas or are you like, uh, we, we still got a couple weeks. I don't have to get ready yet. Uh, what do you mean by ready? Uh, like, like decorations are up. Your Christmas tree is up. You have yep. lights hung. You have bought Christmas presents. Yep. As I said, I start Christmas, um, Thanksgiving weekend. Okay. And so the tree was up Thanksgiving weekend, uh, decorations. Up. Now it's the first Christmas with the wife. Yeah. In our, yeah. our apartment. So it's not like magical Christmas land, but it's Christmas. Have you found anything yet that like, as you're, you're like, uh, where, where like your traditions are clashing yet where it's like, no, 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 I'm, this is what I'm used to for Christmas. And, and, and so there's like a weird, like who, who wins for the Christmas tradition? Not yet. Okay. Uh, we, for the most part are fairly flexible on those things. So, okay. Yeah. It's been fun to watch her like figure out what she wants. Cause for a long time it's been like, Oh mom and dad, what do you want to do in your house? Okay. And now it's her house for her to actually decorate. Right. And go from there. That is pretty cool. I, I, I do remember that. The, the, uh, the bummer this year for us is that we're at my parents' house. I mean, it's great that we're at my parents' house. They, I mean, like <laughs> what a blessing that has been, uh, but but I, I don't get to decorate my house. We're not putting up our decorations or our ornaments uh, on the Christmas tree, and so so it's a little weird to have Christmas like while you're couch surfing <laughs> someone else's someone else's couch, and so so it's interesting. But um, but it is fun to kind of like as you as the two of you come uh, together more and more, like the kind of merging of both of your your traditions. Um, yeah, it'll yeah. be interesting to see how it plays out. Yeah, that'll be cool. Do you have any traditions specifically that you're looking forward to? No. So my brother and his wife are pregnant. Okay. And so that's adjusting the Christmas timetable this year for the family. We're actually celebrating. Uh, by the time this episode comes out, we'll celebrate a Christmas with my family. Okay, right. We're celebrating on Saturday. Okay. <laughs> so we're getting the whole family together doing that. And then um, from there, it'll be hanging out with their family. Um, Christmas is on a Sunday this year. So Christmas Eve, I'll be at church working the uh, media and stuff. And then Christmas Day, I will be mediating it up again. Fantastic. <coughs> uh, we uh, we will be doing the, the Christmas Eve thing. We won't be doing any. I don't think we've got any Christmas celebrations. We had like a staff party the other day. Um, but as far as like family Christmas things, I don't think we've got anything until Christmas Eve. Uh, we have two different Christmas Eve services and, and usually we have a big family gathering that night. And so, uh, I'll be at both of our church's Christmas Eve services. Liz and the boys will leave. They won't stick around for the second one. They'll go to the family thing and then I'll not come in and I get you. <laughs> and then I'll, I'll meet up with them afterwards. Uh, but then we're not, we're not doing church, uh, Christmas day. And so we can get into that in just a little bit. Cause I think that's. Something definitely worth, oh, worth chatting about. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, but like you aren't doing. I know we're gonna get into it, but like you're not doing Christmas. <coughs> uh, our church isn't. Our church is not doing Christmas Day. Oh, your church doesn't love Jesus. Gotcha. Okay. The church. Ho, 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 ho. Um, that was Santa right there. Ho, ho, ho. Uh, we. No, no, no. We'll get into that. We'll get into that. But, but uh, generally, what happens Christmas morning is our uh, a lot of our extended family comes over to uh, my parents' house, and we do just a morning of. Uh, uh, brunch and hanging out and gifts and then a day of kind of like Christmas games and then uh, and then uh, a movie which I think the, uh, the the movie in the top running right now is Avatar. Nice, we're gonna watch that uh, our Christmas uh, celebration on or the Saturday this week. Nice, we'll watch it then and then. Uh, the wife and I talked about watching Violet Night <laughs> on Christmas Day. Okay. <laughs> I'm hoping that, that that's what we get to watch uh, if it doesn't get hijacked by other people that are with us. Yeah, that would be that that would be fun. 
Uh, in fact, maybe I'll talk Liz into like later that night, her and I will go see a movie. <laughs> we'll go watch that one. Cause she's, the she's are all, uh, nestled in their beds. Yep. Dreams of sugar plums in their heads. Yep. Uh, now Ma and I in our kerchief and hat went to go watch Santa with, kill some people. Yeah. I was thinking Santa with a bat. Uh, I don't know. I, I couldn't think. I was like, <laughs> the word Jack in my mind. I was like, Santa Jack. No, that I got nothing. <laughs> Although Santa was jacked. So. Oh. Um, I've been playing a lot with the, uh, the the chat AI. And so I've been thinking a lot of. Uh, I, I feel like I've gotten a little more creative as I've been playing with that, which is interesting because I thought. It I, would... I don't trust it. Anyways, we can save that for a whole other thing as well. Uh, so, uh, yeah, That's, Christmas. That'll be our uh, New Year's Eve special. I, It'll be the uh, 2023 Do We Trust the AI. And and then we could probably just play with it the whole time because there are a lot of really great things. <laughs> uh, no, I'm not. That's the mark of the beast right there. Let me just a little bit of a teaser for what we could probably come up with later. Is I, I asked it to give me the dialogue between Anakin and Obi-Wan as they were fighting on Mustafar. And so it printed me out the, the script. And then I said, uh, now give me or now redo it in uh, Gen Z lingo. It, and it, it just it was fantastic. Like, <laughs> uh, it's, and, and so anyways, but well, did you ask it for uh um, Jim and Dwight. See, these are things. These are things you could do. It, it does. Uh, it's uh, it's blowing me away. I, I keep sending you TikToks on all the ones that I'm finding. Uh, there, there's just. Uh, it's, and it's... I quickly delete them because I don't want to get off the TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> I am definitely on the AI AI TikTok right now. Uh, uh, Christmas, I mean, the, one of the greatest times here as we move into Christmas is uh, the Christmas movies. They're all over the place. They are, um, I, I think, at least I remember back in the day, TBS, I feel like, is like the, the, the Christmas movie station. Do they still play uh, a Christmas story all day on Christmas Day? Christmas Eve, yeah, and Christmas Day, yep. Yeah, yeah. and uh, I mean, there's just something about Christmas movies. They're They're nostalgic. They are... Uh, they're, they're, they're warm and fuzzies and, um, yeah, they're awesome. So with that in mind, Mr. Jeremiah, uh, yeah. what do you think about a Christmas movie draft? Ooh, I like it. All right. I'm a, I'm a big Christmas movie fan. Um, there is one movie that I will watch year round. Yep. Yep. Uh, so I don't want to necessarily say it cause you try to steal it from me. Just to be rude. Well, the last time <laughs> that would be, that would really be mean because I know your favorite one and and uh, but the last time we did a draft, I went first, and so yes. I will let you go first uh, this uh, this game so that you can. Like walk. my honor says, we should flip a coin, but I don't want to do that. <laughs> what did we do last time? Did we do we flip a coin? a coin? We did flip a coin. Yeah, oh. I asked uh, the AI on the apples. Oh, that's right. That's right, you did do that. So you are not totally distrusting of AI. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm not. It's more of I don't want the AIs that are out there to be better than I am at writing sermons and stuff. But that's a whole. All right, so my first pick in the uh, 2022 Christmas draft will be, uh, some might say it's going a little high, but I think it's the best Christmas movie of all time. And that's A Christmas Story. Now, uh, what is it about a Christmas story that makes it like your that, that puts it at the top? Uh, nostalgia, just the way that he tells the story of like taking soap in the mouth, the okay. wanting of that Christmas present. That if you want to wrap up Christmas in like a hour and a half or so movie, that's how you do it. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, there's there's uh, uh, humor. There's heart. There's a BB gun. There's Santa with a boot in your face. Um, uh, one of so defending your family from bandits. Yeah, <laughs> one of, one of my family's traditions, which is changing now that we're back here in Washington. But for the last seven years, was on Christmas Day uh, we would order Chinese food for dinner. Like that's just what we did, and uh, uh, and so I think of that whenever I think of Christmas story. Uh, okay, there's your uh, there's your number one. I am um, I I am oh man. Uh, 
So I, I'm, I'm putting this as number one only because, not because it's a debated Christmas movie, but because it's the movie I watch every Christmas. Does that count? Does that, it's not only debated as whether or not it is a Christmas movie or not, but I watch it on Christmas. And so it's got to be somewhere close. So I am picking Die Hard <laughs> as my number one Christmas movie. Um, I personally don't think Die Hard is a Christmas movie. And, and but you're not I'm alone. I'm not going to argue you have it on your list. Okay. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. Okay. Uh, number two. I'm going to go with National Lampoon's <coughs> Christmas oh, Vacation. Oh, man. Uh, just a movie that can make me laugh at any time I see it. <laughs> it's I, so good. I uh, And I aspire to be Clark one yeah. day with my house. <laughs> I saw a thing the other day that was like, uh, like every Christmas I want to be Clark Griswold. But every year, I'm more like Cousin Eddie. <laughs> <laughs> that is fantastic. Okay, uh, I am. Uh, I am going to go with with just uh, uh, one. I think that that happens every year, and and I can't help uh, but smiling. And it's just so quotable. Is Elf? I'm going to take okay, Elf. That's Number a good two. One. Uh, I'm going to take it back a little bit. Just a couple of years. Okay. Uh, to It's a Wonderful Life. Okay. Probably the Christmas movie. Um, okay. Is there anything specific about that that makes you... Longevity. I how mean, long the movie is? is? Oh, no. How no, long? No, just, <laughs> it's been around as a Christmas movie. Okay. Like, people today will still consider it a good movie, despite how much movies have changed over the years. Okay. So. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Great. Uh, I am going to go with uh, one that I grew up with, and um, it is, it's just, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's probably not like the greatest <laughs> when you think about storytelling, uh, it's pretty, it, it, although there's some fanciful uh, elements, but the, uh, uh, the claymation of Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. It's I'm fantastic. Gonna, I'm going to put number three. That is it. That is right. It's just, I mean, lots of nostalgia. Whenever Christmas rolls around, it's like, okay, when's it on? When's it coming? Yeah. So, yeah. I like to say Bumble's bounce all the time. <laughs> uh, it's one of those, you know, those quoted things that you say all the time that no one ever gets? Yeah, yeah. That's my line. It's Bumble's, they bounce. Uh, I, I have always just loved the Island of Misfit Toys and just thought, why don't uh, it would a marketing idea too i feel like every year those those toys should have shown up somewhere but i, I don't remember ever seeing them i saw a thing it was like the water gun should not have been on the island the kids should just stop putting grape juice yeah yeah in the water gun <laughs> i saw that i saw that too yeah if you just used it the right way it would not be a misfit toy anymore yep Okay. Uh, my next... Oh, is my turn? Yeah, yeah. Number four. I don't want to jump the gun. That's all right. Uh, but I'm going to go in the claymation route, too. Okay. And I'm going to go with A Year Without Santa Claus. Okay. That one the is not ringing any bells for me. Heat Miser, Snow Miser. Okay. That, I, I, I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Okay. Just that those two songs right there are fantastic. They're, they are. They are pretty good. And they changed the weather up to allow for uh, snow in a sunny climate. And I keep hoping that one year the misers will allow that to happen. Really <laughs> that that would be pretty great. That would be pretty great. I remember as a kid always growing up thinking, why can't snow just be warm? Like, how great would that be <laughs> if snow was warm? Um, we should get somebody on that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. I've got... See, I don't think you're going to pick either of these two, so I feel like they're both safe. I'm going to go with the Santa Claus for number four. Ooh. The Santa Claus. That's a fantastic pick. Have you seen the new one by any chance? The Claus. I've not watched the show at all, you know. Oh, that's right. It's a show. It's not a movie. I was hoping that all the episodes would get out and then I could just binge it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Makes I, sense. I get... I yep. got spoiled by Netflix. For sure. For sure. Uh, I, I've just, I always love, uh, I just, I mean, I like Tim Allen anyways, but, um, but it's, it's just a good story. Right. And at the end you get a, it's, you get a little bit of a father son story and it's good times. 
And then there's Bernard yeah. the Elf, and he's great. And there's Judy, who was an elf. See, now I feel bad that I picked it because I don't remember anybody named Judy. But that's only because she's the elf uh, that gives him the uh, his pajamas. Okay, is she was she like the, the little girl, like the really yeah. little? Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then you find out tinsel isn't just for decorations. Yep, yep. Um. Okay, you got your number five? This is your last I one. I do have my number five. It's your last one and of I'm all getting... the other Christmas movies. This is, the, this is your last one. And full disclosure, this is a tough list because I feel like I'm snubbing something. For sure. One movie's being snubbed and an argument can be made for any of them to be on the top five. Oh man, for sure. Uh, but I'm going to go with another father-son movie. Okay. Uh, one that has heart, has heroism. I thought you were going to say, I thought you were saying heroin. <laughs> I was like, Who what, knows? what movie is this? <laughs> uh, it has heart, it has action figures, superheroes, um, Sinbad, oh. Jingle All the Way. Jingle All the Way. Jingle I, All the Way. Is, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you know, I uh, I don't know that I actually ever saw that movie. I like I know of it and I know bits from it, but I don't Sit I don't think I actually and ever sat and movie. watched it. Okay, I will. It's just about the love of Christmas time. You know, making sure you get that toy for your kids and doing anything for that. Yeah, it really puts American Christmas in perspective. Okay. Yeah, yeah. The the commercialism of it all. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> If you want to put a title to it. <laughs> uh, okay. Then uh, my number five is also a little bit of nostalgia. I, I just remember watching it all the time as Christmas season came around. And every once in a while when it wasn't Christmas, um, it, it's just, it's funny. It's entertaining. And it uh, has got a little bit of heart. A little, like just a little bit of heart. Uh, but Scrooged. Ooh. With um, Bill Murray. Yeah, with Bill Murray. I I <coughs> love fantastic Christmas movie. I loved that movie. Yep, there it is. Did you watch the, um, the one with Ryan Reynolds and? I did. Will Ferrell. Yeah, yeah, Spirited. Yep. Spirited. There we go. Yeah, I uh, I I liked I liked the musical aspect. It was so funny. I sat down, and uh, and I started it with Liz and the kids, and it was almost like at the same time all three kids were like, "Wait, are they?" Are they going to sing the whole time? Like, <laughs> and uh, I lost the two younger ones pretty quick. Uh, Ryan stuck around for a little bit and then Liz just a little bit longer than that. And then I watched the rest by myself. Um, yeah. And, and I, 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 I liked it. I thought it was okay. I, I don't think groundbreaking. I, I still don't think I understand the whole good afternoon thing. Um, if that was just something they made up. Have you watched it? Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I really liked the movie. I mean, it was a lot of fun. Not the best Christmas movie I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't make the top five, obviously. <laughs> right. But it's still a fun movie. And I like yeah. the, or the musical aspect of it. Yeah, I, I, I liked their uh, even self-awareness of the musical aspect of it. Um, that, that they would feel a number coming on or... Uh, and so I thought it was, I thought it was really good. And, and I'll be honest, I didn't expect the ending and, uh, and I didn't hate it. So yeah. Yeah. It was good. Yeah. 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 Kind of classic Ryan Reynolds and classic Will Ferrell, uh, at the same time. Yeah. Yep. Definitely so didn't expect the ending to be the way it was. It got a little dark there to be a fully honest with <laughs> Uh, it's, it's it's true. It's true. Darker than expected is. It was almost as though you took that very end, right? No no spoilers. No spoilers. And unless you've seen both of these, you'll only know what I'm talking about. Uh, but it's almost like the very end of Spirited turns into the beginning of the movie Ghost. Yep. <laughs> and that's what we'll say. That's it. That's all I'll say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, hey... Uh, Fantastic draft. I, I feel way better actually about this draft than our Halloween draft because uh, I, I don't think I knew as much <laughs> about 
the, the the horror characters that we used in our uh, uh, bad guy list. Um, yeah. And if you guys would like us to do a draft in the future, um, drop it in the comments below. Yeah. We'll try and draft it up. Yeah, let us know. You guys can tell us how bad Jesse and I did and how we snubbed someone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you disagree with our list? Like, are there any that we put way too high that shouldn't have been and, and ones that we totally left off that should have been on one of those lists at least? Uh, yeah, yeah, let us know. <laughs>
Right, because I think the things that every time we've talked about scripture, at least most of the time that we talk about scripture, so much of it depends on context. And um, and I think the passage, I, I want to, I think it's actually in Ezekiel. It's Ezekiel or Isaiah. But, but the idea is like the, the passage that people are quoting from is don't, like don't adorn your trees with gold or something like that. Um, and, and that's it. And that's like, that's the bit of the passage that people are taking and saying, see, you shouldn't have Christmas trees. If you have a Christmas tree, you're worshiping an idol and you hate Jesus. Um, or something like that. I'm <coughs> filling so in that last So I part. did a quick Google. Okay. And Jeremiah 10, one through five, apparently says this. Hear the word which the Lord speaks to you, O house of Israel. Thus says the Lord, do not learn the way of the Gentiles. Do not be dismayed at the signs of... For the Gentiles are dismayed at them. For the customs of the peoples are futile. For one cuts a tree from the forest, the work of uh, the hands of the workmen with the axe. They decorate it with silver and gold. They fasten it in nails and hammers so that it will not topple. Okay, and that was what? That was Jeremiah 10, one, I, probably 1 through 4 is what I ended up reading. Yeah, and so so that's, uh, sorry, I'm Googling it now too now. Absolutely. Um, um, <laughs> people are just, people are just funny. Right, and so it's, it's, uh, it, that's, that's idol worship. And, and I don't know, actually, very many people, maybe there are people that, that bring a Christmas tree home and bow down to it. Maybe, maybe. I don't know that I've ever seen that. And so I don't know that that is, um, that is exactly what's happening. Yeah. yeah I don't think, I don't that, think anyone that anyone ever, ever that I know, that I know of, has approached a Christmas tree and said, this is my God. Now I will right. worship it. Right. Uh, even yeah. you think about the, uh, um, the temple, right? God had them adorn the temple with gold and jewels and stuff like that. Because right. it was to celebrate him. And so I could see. Or, do you hear that? I do hear that. <laughs> That's the uh, ice cream truck outside. Uh, they're probably getting a lot of business right now in the 45 degree weather. Uh, 45? 63. I lied. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's like this idea that, like, would you go away, sir? <laughs> No is one it, wants ice cream. Is it really the ice cream truck? Yeah. Well, I thought you were like on some website that was doing that. <laughs> no, it's on the ice cream truck. Um, but yeah, the idea that like, um, it's okay to decorate and to put quality work into something uh, that's to celebrate God. Yeah. Because the ultimate thing is you're celebrating God in that moment. You're not celebrating yourself or... Something that hands can make, mm -hmm. which is when God calls up uh, idol worship or uh, mm -hmm. images that are made, it's always by human hands. It's like that's a, not something that's going to last because that's yeah. what you're worshiping. Yeah, and Isaiah like mocks that, right? Because he's like, you're, you, you just cut this thing down. You just carved this out of stone and, and now you're asking it to do stuff for you. Like, do you, do you see how crazy... How crazy that is. Like you made this and now you're bowing down to it to do something for you. And that's, that's just crazy talk. Um, and I don't know that that's, that's what's happening with, with Christmas trees. And so I think that that's a, that, that's a silly thing. Do, do you ever find that, that, or do you ever have that thought that people just want to argue that people just want to be offended by something? Like they're not actually offended. They're not actually concerned about it, but they're like, Oh, it tis the season to complain about something. And so, Spin a wheel. <laughs> Christmas trees. Christmas trees are evil. Uh, <clears throat> yes. I think people want to argue, but also if they can tear away, like, to some degree, and I don't want to say Christianity is under attack because I don't think that's what I'm trying to say here. Right. But if you can sit there and chip away at Christian things that are like easy targets, like low hanging fruit. Mm hmm. You can start to not have to believe it. It's mm. justification for why you don't have to follow Christianity. Yeah. Or you don't have to follow any religion, right? You can sit there and uh, make claims about, 
a lot of religions and why there's falseness in them. Yeah, things that, it, whether or not they actually make sense or not, or you find an article somewhere saying that they don't make sense gives you, gives you cause to, yeah, not have to do anything with it, which then allows you then kind of the freedom to step further and further away from it. I think that's, that's a lot of the deconstructionist, a lot of, right? I'm not saying all, I don't want a blanket statement, but some of those that I know of and have heard of that, that first, that, that kind of like, as soon as they peel back that first layer, it becomes easier and easier to peel back more and peel back more and peel back more. And now they're not even, they're just not even around anymore. And so, but, but they have all these layers they, they can point to, oh, it's because of this and this and this and this and this and this. Not because I just didn't want to, it's because you guys, because you're believing crazy things. And then they get into these, uh, people can get into echo chambers where once you start, we talked about it earlier with the TikTok and how I don't want to be in the AI TikTok, right? Yeah. Uh, if I was to start doing a bunch of deconstruction of Christian, Christian things on TikTok, those are the videos that would be showing up, and I'd be seeing more and more arguments against uh, traditional evangelical Christianity. Right. And I would start being okay with uh, more progressive uh, thoughts. Right. And, and I think that, that you know, uh, having somebody say like, hey, Christmas tree is, is pagan worship, I, I think that's great that somebody is able to say that. Um, and I think that kind of like, well, I think what we've talked about before is that without those kind of statements, we're not able to come back and say, well, no, here's what we are doing. And right. We, we never have yeah. to justify, um, what, what we're doing, right. That was the whole idea with the enlightenment that happened. I don't know, however many hundreds of years ago, uh, the postmodern thinking that was like, wait a minute, why, why did Mary have to be a virgin? Maybe she was just a young girl and they didn't know what other words. It's like, well, I, Okay. That's a good question. I can see why you would say that or, or question it. Here's why. Here's why we believe these things. Here's why it was important that she was. Uh, and um, and so without those questions that seem like they're out of left field, uh, it, we wouldn't be as, um, as um, what's the word? Um, confident in Prepared. our reason? Confident, or, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we wouldn't. Because it's, it, you know, I think those that, that are Christians that, uh, are Christians because they went to a <laughs> to a power team show and uh, saw a bunch of guys break a bunch of things and at the end they're like, "Do you guys want to be strong? Believe in Jesus!" And like all the young boys who are middle schoolers, like, "Yeah, <laughs> I believe in Jesus because I want to break things." Um, but that's that, that's not really Christianity, right? Like that's that's uh, I, that's something else. But but being able to answer the harder questions of like why I believe in these things, why I believe Jesus rose from the dead, why I believe it was important, why I believe all, uh, why, why I believe it's okay to celebrate, uh, along with the culture, things that are not in the Bible. Um, I'm wearing a Santa hat. There are not Bible hats in, or they're not Bible hats in the Santas. There are not, uh, you know, Santa is not a thing. He's not real Shh, boys. If you're listening, I'm just making a podcast. Don't worry. Um, it's, uh, we're not worshiping any of this, but it's there's nothing wrong with with uh, being, in, I think, a part of the culture, provided that you're 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 keeping those those I think proper boundaries. Uh, I think as soon as I get into the point where I'm worshiping Santa, where I'm uh, discounting uh, the works of the Holy Spirit uh, in order to uh, line up better with culture, then I think that's where we get a problem. And I think that's actually where, uh, I mean, if you're a deconstructionist and you're hearing this and this offends you, I'm sorry, but I think that's where that's coming from. The, the, um, the, the wanting to line up with what culture is going through. And so you're stepping away from what scripture says so that you can line up with culture, which I think is what a lot of the old Testament law was trying to do was trying to separate God's people from the others so that they would stand out so that they would not blend in with the culture because it's so easy to to do that to blend in because because mm. you, you want to be a part of that you want to fit in you want to you want to do what everybody else is doing you don't want to be the one guy that that is that is making a stand and um so it's so it's easy which is i think another reason or this is definitely like rabbit trailing now <clears throat> why it's important to be a part of a a, a bible loving bible believing church so that you're not uh, uh, drifting out on your own, and it's easier to stand in the places where you need to stand up against culture. Um, yeah, you want to make sure the foundation that you have is solid, and yeah. that you're constantly reinforcing it. Because you could start off on the Bible as your foundation, 
And if you aren't regularly upkeeping that foundation, it will erode. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me. I have a cough today, apparently. <clears throat> I'll allow um, it. <clears throat> cut this part out, folks. <laughs> uh, folks, That's why it's important out. to have a, uh, a solid foundation of the Bible, right? So that way... Um, and to constantly keep it up, to uh, constantly do maintenance on it. And right. you do that by being connected to a Bible-believing church and interacting with Bible believers mm -hmm. that uh, hold the uh, authenticity and the uh, truthfulness of the Bible in high regard. And, and the more that you are understanding and you are not understanding the Bible, uh, that, that can come. But the more that you spend time in your Bible... As people make claims, either for Christianity or against Christianity, or like when they say, like, here's the truth about Christianity, if, if you've never really read the Bible, then it's really easy to believe whatever sounds good, whatever seems like the most compelling argument. Um, and so you should read your Bibles. Like, you should know what your Bibles, what your Bibles say. And a lot of the compelling arguments will pull on heartstrings rather than on we'll say facts of the Bible. And so you might sit there and be like, okay, I'm totally going to go ahead and believe this. And it's like, no, that's not what the Bible says. And, but if you sit there and can understand context, mm -hmm. if you can understand, um, who's being written to, why they're writing the, uh, that particular passage or whatever, then you can better understand what's actually being said. And you don't get caught up in, Oh, Christmas trees are bad. I should get rid of my Christmas tree. Say, like, no, 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 he was talking about don't worship that uh, that tree. Don't bring it into your house. Don't work on it. And then be like, here is my God. Let me worship it. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, it's funny how seemingly easily people can be uh, uh, swayed. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, but I, I mean, I don't know. I, I'm sure that that was me at some point. And I, I think as I get older, I get more cynical. So as soon as somebody says something, I'll go, mm, I don't know. <laughs> um, let me think. Uh, yeah, it, it's weird. So let's move on to, if you don't mind. Yeah. I think that wraps it up pretty well. Uh, yeah, yeah. two quick things that came out of that, or one quick thing that really came out of that. Um, Santa. Okay. You quickly threw a sign in there saying, hey, kids, if you're listening, I'm just making a podcast. Uh, my kids. I'm talking about my Absolutely. kids. Absolutely. Yeah, your kids, your kids, your kids. <laughs> uh, do all of your kids understand that Santa is real? Okay. Uh, that's how I asked that question. Um, nope. Well, one of them, uh, gosh, for a number of years now, he's been pretty, like, uh, he, he, and it's just his own understanding. We're not, we don't make a huge deal about it. For sure. And so, um, it didn't take long for him to be like, mm, okay, I see what you're doing. But at the same time, he understood what we were doing as far as like, um, just, I don't know. I, I don't think it's that. I, some parents probably think it, it can be harmful. I, I think it depends on how you do it. But, um, but he's like, but I'm not going to say anything because... Because the other two, like, it's still kind of important to them. And so I'll, I'll play along. Um, I still so, get presents from Santa to this day. Yep. Yep. Uh, I I still get presents from Santa to this day. I mean, it's just stuff I wanted to buy myself that nobody else was going to buy me. But. Oh, no, I'm saying I still get, like, <laughs> actual, like, surprise presents from Santa. Yeah. I will have something from under the tree saying, to Jeremiah from Santa. And you won't know tree. what it is. Yeah, well, I have no idea. Because I don't buy it myself, so. Uh, I, I don't see any problem with Santa. Um, I asked my mom one time, like, how did I come to the realization about Santa? And she was like, you and your brother just kind of stopped. That was it. Like, there was no, yeah. like, uh, hey, this is the worst day in the world. You've totally ruined my life. Uh, you've been lying. There was none of that. Like, the movie freak out didn't happen. She was you just kind of said, All right. Yeah. <laughs> and you kept playing the game, I guess. Yeah, yeah, and, and I, I can't think of a time when I was, when I realized it. I, I don't know. I, I don't think that I freaked out about it. I almost <laughs> let it slip 
I did let it slip the other day to the boys. We were we were talking about Oh, they were talking about things that were scary, like different video games or different clips they find on YouTube that are scary or whatever and and so I was trying to tell them I was like, "Look, they're just they're just stories. That's all they are. They're stories. They're not real. They're just stories. Uh that they they have no power. They're not real. It's like it's the same thing with like Santa. Like it's just not like it's not real." And James I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> what do you mean? What do you mean that, that Santa's not real? And I was like, oh, no, no, no. Sorry, I was talking about something else. Anyways, and then I went, and I just like switched right back into like <laughs> where I was going. And I just never like just, and, and, and that was enough. That was enough for them. But I'm sure that. I'm waiting those, for the day that uh, James just walks up and goes, all right, dad. He walks in, <laughs> locks the door behind him. We got to <laughs> talk. <laughs> So what's really going to be a bummer is that I'm pretty sure that James is going to figure it out first, and and he and Josh have this 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 like this uh, love? brother this brotherly <laughs> love hatred kind of thing where they man they're the first ones to like get in each other's corner and like back each other up they're 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 right there but they are also the first one to be like oh I got something that's going to just tick you off and. Uh, um, you make me mad, and I'm gonna. I have I have things in oh, the chamber man. ready to go. Right, absolutely. <laughs> uh, they they did that. Uh, who I can't remember which one, which one did it to whom, but they they uh, uh, one kid had to stay home, and, and the other kid went to school. So it must have been sickness related or something like that. And at school was this big party, and like got all of this stuff, and and he came home, and he was like, you know what? I, I feel bad because the other brother missed out on that, so I'm just not gonna tell him. I'm not going to tell him. I'm just going to hold on to it. Just, And then it was like the next day that they got into a fight. And so the one that like got all the stuff was like, well, you know what? When you missed school the other day, I got all this stuff. So there you go. <laughs> I'm better than you. And it just, it's like, what are you doing? <laughs> so, yeah. And it's something that like, honestly, you think about it doesn't really matter. Right. Yeah. It's, <laughs> no, no, not at all. But so I bring. Uh, you know, if, if I'm not super worried about it because we don't put a huge emphasis on Santa. And For so sure. when they find out, I don't think that while they might be like upset and a little bit like, so who's eating all those cookies? Um, uh, I, I don't think that it's going to take them long to, to get over that. But, but, but yeah, if so, like in July, in like, July. yeah, yeah, yeah. Just <laughs> in the middle of the year when it's, it's not a big deal. Like they're not yeah. worrying about, you know, oh my goodness, he's, I gotta be a good kid. They're just yeah. like. Okay. Yeah, but but I'm I'm prepared to have those conversations as far as you know Santa, uh, really just being kind of a a, a I don't know a, a knockoff uh, Jesus in the sense of um, giving things to, to to kids. But where Jesus is better is that Jesus doesn't have this naughty or nice list, right? He's not he's not waiting for you to mess up and then oh sorry you've messed up so you don't get any presents this year. Uh, Jesus, Are you sure about that? I know plenty of people. <laughs> told me that's how Jesus operates. Uh, there is a book. There's a book for sure, uh, and, and with a list in it. Uh, but but uh, but that is that is only for those who who uh, uh, who, who refuse altogether. But and so so Jesus's gifts are available to everybody, and you can't lose it. And uh, once you're in that book, you're in that book, and that's 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 what makes Jesus so much better than uh, than than anything Santa could do. But Santa's modeled after this idea of. Uh, uh, loving people and, and giving to people in in need, or even those who aren't in need, but just to sh just to, to spread love and joy and peace and kindness. Christmas cheer, Christmas cheer. Yeah, cheer. for all to hear. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, so there we go. That's that's so there you go. What was the other thing? That was Santa, and you said another one. Uh, I mean, you briefly said you're not going to do it. Uh, Christmas on Sunday. How, how's your church handling that? Yeah, uh, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> I, I uh, uh, you know, I, I showed up and I'm the new guy here. And I was like, hey, look, if you guys want to, uh, you know, be a real church, then we're going to cancel cancel service or I'm out. And so like, oh, no. Well, like, we, well Jesse's way more important than that Jesus fella. We, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, we, uh, for for weeks, we had conversations about it. What, what do we think? What do we... Uh, what are the what are the pros? What are the cons? Um, and uh, you know, even a even a kind of a poll within um, just our staff. Like, if if you were able to, if 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 Christmas was 
on like on a different day. No, that doesn't. I don't know how the question went. If if like if they're like, hey, you don't have to come to church on Sunday. How many of you would take that so that you could do whatever it is that you have planned as families? And it was I think it was like half. Like half was, um, uh, like, like um, if if I didn't have to be here, my family has things with other family, and like that's that's probably what what I would do instead because you know you get family coming from out of town, family that's not believers, they don't go to church anyways, um, and. Uh, and so, so we took that and then we put it to the church. And so then we asked kind of the whole church, like, wh where are you guys at with this whole thing? Like, is it something that you, you need to have? And so, and the, uh, most of us on staff, we were like, um, we, we were prepared to, to be here, like for sure. Like, uh, like if, if this is where the people are, like, I'm going to be here at church. Um, my, my spouses aren't <laughs> like most of our spouses are like, I'm, I'm not coming. We're doing other things. Um, uh, they should definitely take that logic and apply it to like Easter this year. Is it also? Oh, I was like, wait, is Easter on a Sunday this year? It's on a Sunday. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I mean, that's uh, to play devil's advocate for a moment. Yeah. Like, that's my first thought is yeah. uh, we don't do like other holidays. We won't do this for uh, Easter being the major one that we know happens on a Sunday. Uh, and what better time to bring in this moment of celebrating the birth of our Lord and Savior? Than to do with your family that will be everlasting, right? Isn't that pretty much what happens on Christmas Eve, though? Yes, it's. But you tell me you can't. You say you can celebrate Jesus enough in one day. You get one shot. <laughs> Jesus, you have one opportunity. You can capture it, or you can just <laughs> let it slip. Jesus, it's on you. Make you better make it count, Jesus. Um, Happy birthday, Jesus! I'm sorry your birthday was ruined. <laughs> Sorry, your birthday was so lame. Um, uh, so, so we we concluded though that the the majority of the church would not have come, anyways. Uh, and so, so what we decided so true believers would have, yeah, gotcha, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, all the Marvel fans. Um, we uh, we <laughs> so we decided we were going to do two Christmas Eve services, and we were going to put all of a lot of our focus and energy into the Christmas Eve services. Um, but we weren't going to just leave it at that. We were going to create. Um, a uh, an, an at home Christmas experience uh, that would have been very similar to kind of like um, uh, like COVID times with um, uh, and so I actually I'm not sure if I like uh, COVID as a uh, no, as no, a no, benchmark for, sure. for anything this this right here this so here's there's a bow a bow is goes around most of these uh, but everyone's gonna get one of these we're gonna pass them out uh, this Sunday which. As you're listening to this, would have been the previous Sunday, Maybe yesterday, uh, the the 18th, <laughs> um, as well as Christmas Eve. Every family is going to get one of these boxes, and inside the box is um, uh, is a, is a, a card. We actually created a <laughs> created a website. So what happens when you get three youth pastors or former youth pastors on staff, and somebody has an idea, and then the rest just run with it, and we just make it happen. We, uh, uh, Jeremy, the lead pastor, he was like, we're going to create like Christmas in a box. It's like, like Hello Fresh, where there's a meal in a box, but instead this is a uh, Hello Jesus, Christmas in a box. And so then one of our guys, oh, you know him, Aaron, uh, he, uh, he, was, he just piped up. He's like, you know what? Hello Jesus dot church is available as a domain. <laughs> and then and then I said That's a fantastic if, domain. And I was like, what if what if we took the Hello Fresh logo and just like altered it a little bit and and made uh Hello Jesus dot church and get my phone to focus on there, right there. Here, Jeremy, I'll show you as well. So I was like, I can't see it, so yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah. So we made we, we made that logo. And, and so when you go to that uh to that site, there'll be a number of links. Uh, one will be a devotional video by the lead pastor and his wife. Uh, well, they're putting a, a video together like that. Um, as well as, I think, I think there was talk of links of different like worship songs that you could watch. They're just really well done. Um, we, we have in this, uh, or as well as there's a, a, a video kind of like fun Christmas quiz, uh, that you could sit down with your family and watch it. And it's just Christmas trivia. Um, How many wise men showed up? That is one of the questions. Yep. Um, That's uh, my favorite go-to Christmas question. <laughs> it's, it's pretty good. It's way more spiritual than my go-to Christmas question, uh, which is what was the name of the horse in Jingle Bells? Um, Bobtail? It is Bobtail. Good job. Well done. Uh, you know, bells on Bobtail ring. That's, that's what it is. They right make there. spirits uh, bright. 
but then, but then we made a uh, like for the kids like a nativity nativity scene cutouts uh, okay. along with with markers so kids can kids can color a little nativity scene uh, and then we went uh, even a little bit liturgical which I think is not super common but we uh, put together a uh, at home advent readings uh, along with candles to to go through and so um, and I think oh and I think on that site if you go to the site. There's also, uh, as a staff, we colored some of those um, uh, those nativity pieces. Actually, we colored all of them, and then we acted out a nativity story, and it's just ridiculous. But it's really funny. Um, and, and so, so we wanted to send like since we're not doing church, we still wanted to give people an opportunity to do church. And I think that because church is is um, it's just a place. Right, it's the, the the there's nothing significant so much about the building um, that it's super easy to have church at home. And I think by doing this right here, we're actually kind of training people uh, to to be able to do church without some figurehead up front saying, "Okay, now do this, now do this, now follow me as I do it." But now putting it in the hands of uh, of the people to be able to do to do church with their families and to be able to do it with like the family that's coming that normally wouldn't have come to church or family that's from out of town, and so. Yeah, so so that's what we're doing instead of church. So we're not just being like closed doors, party, live it up, uh, but we're we're creating these at home Christmas experiences. Interesting. I'd be curious to see the numbers on like how many people visit the website, um, and then all that stuff to see yeah. how that, uh, practically plays out. Yeah, for sure. And and it's I mean, we'll we'll evaluate it, and then in seven years we'll decide <laughs> if it was worth. No, because the last Christmas was it. what four or five years ago. See, it felt like it was sooner because I thought that we had done one in uh, at uh, Long Beach. Lines. We did, yeah. But I, but I didn't, I didn't remember. Um, but seven years, I, yeah. But because generally it would be seven years. Well, no, right? you throw in leap years. Silly leap years. Yeah, you throw in the leap years, and it throws off the whole schedule of when Christmas would be happening. Mm. Makes sense. Makes sense. So, so that's what we're doing. So it's. It's uh, it's it's church without church, um, without being at church, and so so we'll see. Yeah. I, I don't know. Maybe, uh, you know, maybe this will be really good, and, and people will 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 uh, will really like it and utilize it, and and, and they realize people. that you're not useful, and uh, you could just be kicked out. Yeah, what? they don't need us at all. <laughs> Everyone just stops coming to church because they can just do it on their own. Now. Um, uh, or uh. Or yeah, or we'll find out that everyone stopped believing in Jesus because we didn't have church on Sunday, and so, um, and then we'll we'll just have to start over. So why did you guys choose Christmas Eve over Christmas Day? Uh, I, the I easy think, option could have been, hey, just don't have a Christmas Eve service, right? Yep. You can have a Christmas Day service. Yeah, I, and I, I would say probably because of tradition. Uh, it, there's almost mm-hmm. always a, a Christmas Eve service, candlelight service. It's what people plan into their Christmases. Um, yeah, I know other places that do a tradition-based faith. It's uh, worked out well for them. <laughs> uh, and, and uh, you know, going to your... Uh, all jokes, by the way, folks. All jokes. That was That's Jeremiah's even joke. He's including that all jokes as a joke. No. Uh, uh, it, it's, it's There's a little bit of... Yeah, what's what's best for the whole? Um, what what where are you going to reach the most? Uh, the most people, and yeah. and, I th- and, I, and 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 it's hard. It's not an easy answer. It's kind of like during COVID times, you're never going to make a decision that's going to get 100 percent people like on board. Like it's just it's just not going to happen. Uh, and so whether we did church uh, or canceled church, there's going to be a percentage of people that say we should have done it the other way. And, Absolutely, uh, yeah. And so. This is what made most sense for uh, for providing opportunities for people to be with their families uh, and to be with their loved ones, especially I think the staff and the worship team in saying that like um, we really value you and your time with your families. And so instead of requiring you to be here uh, uh, and separated from your families, we want you we want you to be with your families. Um, and so that that held more weight than. Um, Interesting. Uh, you see, if you separated from families. I would just say your families have to be here. Conscript them. Make them yeah. come to the service. <laughs> Both services, you need to write every single family member into the service. And it can just be like a walk up on stage and say one line of the Christmas story. 
one line. It becomes like one of those, uh, like, uh, like those icebreaker games where you just say one sentence of a story and then you just kind of all string it along. Uh, that, I mean, that would be pretty funny. Um, uh, my family is involved in the Christmas Eve service, though. Uh, we'll be doing one of the candle lightings. Uh, uh, I am not involved with any of the Christmas Eve service or Christmas Day service. Other than doing... the fact that I will do all the media. <laughs> right. Is anybody else there? Is it just you? Uh, no, I have um, my two Osterman boy helpers uh, on Christmas Day. Mm. Uh, but their mother has asked that they sit with them on Christmas Eve, which, yeah. whatever. Uh, and then I have uh, Nicholas, uh, my friend Nick, who helps us out. Yeah. Uh, so. Cool. Yeah, that'll be good. I, uh, uh, I will not be in the sound booth at all on uh, either of them. Um, uh, but I did do a lot of the... I, you know what I miss? I, the, the thing I miss about uh, Long Beach Alliance is access to the... I, I think I've said it before. The editing software that <laughs> you've told me offline. I don't know if you said uh, on the pods. I, I really miss access to all those Adobe things, and so because the different videos that we did here for this Christmas thing, trying to do it all on either iMovie or whatever, it's just it's like, oh man, I wish I wish I had all that other stuff again. You gotta look at the Da Vinci program I told you about. It's free. I I started to look at it, and it and it wasn't super helpful. I think it was because of not being able to have multiple. Uh, multiple audio tracks or mul there was something I could only, I couldn't do as much as I wanted. I could just do a limited amount. Um, but, but in any case, so, so, so that's it. We're, we're not trying to be heathens. We're trying to love our families. We're trying to love them well. And we're trying to also equip them um, uh, to, to be able to, to kind of do some of this stuff at home. And, nice. And then, you know, God, God willing, we have everybody come back the next week and, and then we just kind of keep going. <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah. I know that there, there are, there are people out there that are pretty split. I, I, I've, I mean, I've seen the arguments go as far as does, you know, that, that you're bowing down to, to, to culture or you're bowing down to something like that. It's the same arguments as COVID. It's the same, uh, the same type of things. And there might be churches that are, I, there, there are a lot of, <laughs> There are a lot of churches, though, their services, their Christmas services are like full on Broadway productions with Santa Claus giving out gifts and flying sleighs with reindeer. Right? And so it's flying drummer boys over the entire congregation. So I saw on TikTok they're doing. Yeah, I mean, and so just because you meet at church at a building on Sunday doesn't always mean that it's church. Well, it doesn't mean it's necessarily celebrating or worshiping God. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Um, but I would hope that you're not part of a church that would meet on a Sunday and wouldn't worship God. Agreed. That seems a bit pointless. It absolutely does. <laughs> it's just a social club at that point, and that's weird. It, yeah. Yeah, it is It is weird. Because then you got to wonder. It, then it just feels more like you're just trying to check a box, right? Like, oh, I went to church. What did you do there? I went to church. What do you mean? What do you mean? What did I do there? I went to church. I uh, went there. That's what I did. The pastor spoke. Church. Yeah. Very moving. Very moving message. Yep. Just moved me right out to lunch. Oh, lunch was great. Lunch we did. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so yeah, I, 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 I don't know. So hopefully by not having church on Sunday, we're able to, to connect more with our, with our communities. And I think as, as our church tries to figure out how to better connect with our communities, that, that, that how we do church doesn't become a roadblock to people wanting to get to know Jesus. I feel like I was kind of, uh, uh, what is that called? Salad smithing a sandwich? Or, jeez Louise. Word smithing a salad? I don't even know what, what is you're that? Going they, used to, they used to re re refer to uh, uh, a former president when he would start talking, and then after a while, not being sure what he was saying. I thought there was a something like a word salad. A word salad. Yeah, yeah, just a vomiting word salad thing. <laughs> <laughs> something like that. Wow, you said words. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, anyways. but nowhere in that train of thought was a coherent thought. <laughs> Didn't we do that last week? Was that last we podcast do. week? We, we do. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and I will gladly quote that. What's well, another one was, I have no problem quoting at, at any given moment. Oh, gosh. O'Doyle rules. <laughs> um, 
Oh man. So hot. Uh, uh, <laughs> that was a different scene. Um, 1492? <laughs> oh, gosh. Good movies. Um, stay, in stay in school. Stay in school. Yeah, stay in school. You don't want to have to repeat all of the grades um, in a week. Yeah, um, I mean, yeah. Uh, yeah, which only happens because your parents are ridiculously rich. Um, and if you know what movie we're talking about, why don't you go ahead and drop a comment? Let's see how close you are. Also, if you're going to drop a comment, why don't you drop a comment about uh, church? Are you going on Christmas Day? Why or why not? There you go. I'll tell you what, I'll put a poll. I'll make a poll. Uh, going to church and then in the, in the, like, I think it's just, I don't think you can leave a comment on the poll. But I don't I'll know, tell you what. On just, the YouTube, just the you can. On the YouTube. On the YouTube, you can. Just say what you're thinking. Oh, it yeah. is. It is. Uh, I'm just realizing the time. And uh, I, I need to be uh, shipping out of here. All right, well, Jesse's if ever the, fantastic. Yeah, I was like, if ever there is a segue, it's, <laughs> oh, I got to go home. Um, <laughs> well, hey, let's hit him with those two things. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, two thing number one. Yep, two thing number one. <laughs> <laughs> That's how we're saying these things. Uh, you are loved. Uh, you are loved by the uh, your father in heaven, your creator. Uh, you're also loved by Jesse and I. And I want you to know that. But more importantly, you are loved by God. That's and right. he wants a relationship with you. That's right. Whether you go to church on Sunday for Christmas or not. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and two, that second thing is that tomorrow is not guaranteed to you. You might die tonight. And, and, and you don't have any control over that. None of us do. And so don't put something off for tomorrow that you can do mm. uh, today. Uh, if it's important, do it now. Don't wait. And those All are right. two things. I've been Jeremiah. And I'm Jesse. This has been your Level 5 Podcast. Get out of here, crazy kids.